The risk of losing money is part of investing and trading. And this is why many investors consider risk-adjusted returns when evaluating investment and trading strategies. But what exactly is risk-adjusted return, and how do you calculate it? Risk-adjusted return is a measure that compares the profit against the risk in order to achieve the returns. There are many ways to measure risk-adjusted return, and in this video, we'll cover what we consider the five best ratios and formulas to evaluate risk-adjusted returns. We'll cover the Sharp Ratio, the Sortino Ratio, the Jensen Ratio, the Trainer Ratio, and the simplest method of them all, comparing the returns and the time spent invested. The last one's the best, so make sure you stick to the end. First, let's explain what we mean by risk and why it's important. Risk is the probability of losing money over a certain period. For example, look at the two different strategies on the screen. Which one would you rather like to trade? We assume most traders and investors would choose investment one. You get the same result for both investments, but you suffer a lot less by investing in number one. Investment two is like a roller coaster, and you'll risk being scared out before you finish. Let's provide you with another real-life example. On the screen, you see an example of three different strategies. The green line is the Swedish All Share Index, while the red line is a basket of hedge funds provided by Broomer and Partners. Albeit the hedge funds returned less, you can clearly see that the result was a lot less volatile than solely being invested in Swedish stocks. This is what we're trying to measure by looking at risk-adjusted returns. How much volatility and pain do you suffer to get the end result? Every investor or trader aims to get the best return for the lowest amount of risk. If an investment is liable to large swings in the returns, you might suffer large losses, but you might also make behavioral mistakes. One typical mistake is selling into a panic or buying into a frenzy because of the fear of missing out. Even if you have the best trading strategies in the world, you might abandon them after an inevitable string of losses. When your money's on the line, volatility matters. Let's look at the most famous risk-adjusted return ratio, the Sharpe Ratio. The name is given by its inventor, William Sharp, who developed the ratio during the 1960s. Put short, the Sharpe Ratio measures the excess return compared to the risk-free rate per unit of risk. You take the difference between the return and the risk-free treasury rate and divide by the standard deviation of the returns. The idea behind the sharp ratio is that you should expect higher returns to compensate for increased risk. A good sharp ratio is preferably above 0.75, but in practice, very few manage a ratio above 1. We consider a sharp ratio above 1.5 as extraordinary. For example, the most successful hedge fund in the world, Jim Simon's Medallion Fund, has a sharp ratio of 1.68 between 1993 and 2005. Another risk and return ratio that's gained popularity is the Sortino Ratio. It was developed by Frank Sortino and is considered a variation of the Sharpe Ratio. While the Sharpe Ratio penalizes all kinds of volatility, the Sortino Rate penalizes only volatility of negative returns. This makes sense because humans tend to react emotionally more negative to losses than positive to corresponding gains. Let's show you a practical example of the Sortino Ratio. We need three variables to calculate the Sortino ratio, average returns, downside risk, and the risk-free rate of return. In our example, we compare two mutual funds. When we put the values into the Sortino formula, we see that fund H is better because it returns more per unit of downside risk taken. As a rule of thumb, a Sortino ratio above 2 is considered very good. Let's look at the third risk-adjusted return ratio, Jensen Ratio, often called Jensen Alpha. Just like the two ratios we covered before, this one is also renamed after its inventor, who is Michael Jensen, an economist. The aim of the Jensen Ratio, or Jensen Alpha, is to measure how much an investment returned above or below its expected return, defined by the Capital Asset Pricing Model, abbreviated CAPM. Jensen's alpha can have a positive or negative value. A positive value suggests that the portfolio return is more than the expected return, while a negative value shows that the portfolio earned less than the expected return considering the risk. Let's show you an example. A mutual fund had a return of 16% last year while the relevant market index returned 10%. 
The fund's beta is high at 1.4, and the risk-free rate is 2%. If we put the numbers into the Jensen Ratio formula, we get a value of 2.8. Thus, the fund overperformed on a risk-adjusted basis. Let's switch to the Trainer Ratio, developed by Jack Trainer. It differs from the Sharp Ratio because the Trainer Ratio measures the return earned in excess of the risk-free return. The trainer ratio highlights the risk-adjusted return based on the portfolio's beta. The stock market as one broad portfolio has a portfolio of one. A portfolio with a higher beta has a bigger return potential, but is also assumed to have a bigger risk. The higher the trainer ratio, the better. Now let's give you a practical example of how the trainer ratio is calculated. We use three different funds to illustrate how it works as shown on the screen. The table shows that Fund C has the best trainer ratio even though it has the lowest return. The reason is that the beta, or the volatility, is significantly lower than Funds A and B, thus it compensates for the lower returns. Fund C turned out to offer the best return per unit risk taken. Let's go to our fifth and last metric for risk-adjusted returns. This one is simple to calculate and is a good metric for short-term traders comparing different strategies. We take the annual return of the strategy and divide by the time spent invested. For example, if the annual return is 10% and the strategy is invested in the markets 50% of the time, the risk-adjusted return is 20%. The method makes intuitive sense. Your capital is always at risk in the markets, and the less time you spend in the market, the lower the risk. If you can accomplish the same return with significantly less time spent in the market, the better. That was all for today. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and comment to help us provide more free videos like this.